look, it's the black holocaust, I knew it was prophecy, a thousand times worse than the Jewish atrocities, uneven playing field, there'll never be a fair score, cause in 1619, that's when they declared war, we the 12 tribes, the ones that the promise reaches, my knee they got a video on the internet, where these Jewish people, they just fool, they don't know where they're at, but they fool these Asian people, I'm just deep too, and the Asians are crying, they can't speak English, they don't speak it up, but they all are happy about the fact somebody's saying that they're Israelites, right? Yeah. But the Lord, read, read up what you got right there. And he said unto me, said a man, cause thy belly to eat, right. and fill thy bowels with his royal that I give thee. Right. Then did I eat, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. Right. And he said unto me, said of men, right. go get thee unto the house of Israel, right. and speak with my, speak with my words unto them. With my words unto them, go ahead. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech. With strange speech, go ahead. And of a hard language, right. but to the house of Israel. Go ahead. Now keep going. I'm looking for the part where you said they were listening. Not too many people of the strange speech right. and of any hard language right. whose words thou canst not understand. Go ahead. Surely right. had I sent thee to them right. that they would have hearkened Unto thee. And what's proof of that? Because the Lord says, surely, right? And what's proof of that is what I'm talking about. They flew some people from our language, some Asians, and told them guys that they were Israelites. Those Asians were crying like it was the best. You wouldn't even think they even cared about the Bible. With the dogs that they eat and the dragons that they were worshiping. You, know, so you wouldn't think that they cared nothing about the Bible. But when these white people said that they were Israelites, the people came out there crying. And the Lord says, surely, if I sent you to them guys, they would have listened to me, right? Go ahead. That's, uh... Not too many people of strange speech right. and of a hard language right. whose words I cannot understand. Right, so the Lord didn't send us to go to all these weird nations, right? Same thing with you seek. Not those people whose tongue that cannot understand. Go ahead. Surely, had I sent thee to them, right. they would have hearkened unto thee. So these other nations would have listened, man, if, we, if God would have sent us to them. If, we, if God would have sent us to the Chinese and told them, hey, man, you know you guys are one of the 12 tribes of Israel? You guys are God's chosen people? You guys are the kings of the earth? Do you think they would fight with us on that? They'd be like, no, tell me more. You know what I'm saying? No matter how much they, they would do that. You know what I'm saying? Right. Our people, our people do that. They're not listening. But God's, it's not like, you know, that's something new. The Lord told us this was going to happen, right? Go ahead. For the house of Israel would not hearken unto thee. So the house of Israel, God's people won't hearken. God said these other nations, they would have listened. Surely they would listen. He said, but the house of Israel, the people you see on the sign, they would not hearken unto me, right? Go ahead. For that will not hearken unto me. So the Lord said, look, they're not going to listen to you. Isn't that an unbelievable game the Lord got us in? Look, go speak to the children of Israel. Go speak all my words to them. But they're not going to listen to you because they didn't listen to me. But you got to tell them whether they didn't listen. Like, Lord, why are you doing this? You know what I'm saying? I don't feel, you know, you, you, you guys keep dealt with it before, right? Go ahead. For all the house of Israel all the house of Israel, right? Go ahead. Are imputed right? and hard-hearted. And hard-hearted, right? Which is what? Hard-headed again, right? Go ahead. Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces. Right. The Lord has made our face strong against their faces. Because some of our people, they'll, they'll, they'll turn you down with a smile. You know what I'm saying? But some of our people are thinking, you punk ass, you lying ass thing. So the Lord said, He's made our face hard against their face. And sometimes our people need that. They don't need you to be hating, hey, brother, love, love, love. They need you to come at them the way that they're coming at you, ah, you know what I'm saying? Ah. That's how I gotta go with our people, right? That's why when it comes to our people, the best speakers are usually the ones that get up there, and, like, like Malcolm X. How they get up there, oh, what's the boy's name? our people. What, what, what? It everybody, right? No. No, it does not mean everybody. You consider me your people? When you look, hey, yes, I do. I consider are you gonna, brother. You're going to come and just tell us a blatant lie like that? Say. You don't consider me your brother, man. Well, then, if I'm your brother, when you, go, when you get the rest of your brothers and go to the government and tell them that they need to give back the Native Americans their land? We already have it. See that? It's called the fucking cloud. The who? The cloud. The cloud? Yeah, it's cloud. It's my fucking Enjoy that one. Go ahead, man. Isn't it just crazy how they linger around? You don't even know they're there. You hear what he said? Look what he said. He said they, they got the cloud. Yeah, the cloud. This is my land. Yeah, yeah. I wonder what he's talking about. The cloud. He's talking about the, the computer. Nah, he's talking about death. He's talking about death. Yeah. That was crazy, man. Verse 8. Behold. I have made thy face strong against their faces, right. and thy forehead strong against their foreheads. Right. So we can be hard-headed too, right? right. 
We can frown, we can be hard headed too, but at the same time, we want to show love to our people, you know what I'm saying? The Bible says, let your words be seasoned with salt, knowing how to answer every man. Sometimes, the answer you got to give to a man got to be a greasy one, but you're only doing it to try to pull him in. Right? Not to run him off, but we know our people don't really, really get it. But the Lord made us like that for a reason, right? Go ahead. As an adamant harder than flint. You know this ain't talking about Creflo Dollar or nothing. No. They don't make forehead, they nobody's forehead. They don't have to be. They don't have to argue. They just, just go talk and get all your money. You know what I'm saying? That's and then all that money they got, look at the Valley Holyfield. Who he went broke? Remember that he gave Creflo Dollar over like $5 million? Creflo uh, Dollar wouldn't even help that man pay his rent. And, and you know, it doesn't even really have to be uh, confronted face to face about that. I had a dude that was talking to Exxon. What's up, man? <laughs> I'm feeling it. Uh -huh. I'm feeling it. Oh, I know that's right. Say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Today is crazy, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I lost the problem of my track of thought. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hold on. I'm talking about Holyfield. Uh, but he, he, uh, no, I was thinking of somebody else, too. There was another man. Wow, Xbox. No, okay, my dude on Xbox, right? So this guy goes to this dude named uh, Pastor Winston. The pastor in Chicago, right? This black pastor has told these guys that they are going to own the monetary system. <laughs> that they're just going to start their own bank. I'm thinking this is a joke. When I go look this guy up, this dude got a huge ass church. So now, when I'm able to ask with my partner, I'm like, hey man, uh, you go to church today? He's like, yeah, but how much money did you get a pastor today? Oh, I gave my best donation. Well, what is your best donation? What is your best donation? <laughs> give, give me an example of what your best offering is. So he will never answer that. So I said, man, how many times have you talked to your pastor, man? He's like, oh man, oh man. I'm like, just truthfully, how many times have you, like, you're asking me all these questions, how many questions have you asked this pastor that you've given all this money mm. to? Mm. You cannot give me an answer for that. Mm. And you know how many thousands of people, this is a 22,000 member of our congregation. None of those guys are talking to that pastor. Right? That is an unbelievable racket, you know what I'm saying, where you can just go in and charge all these people, tell these people that the laws are done away with, but then charge them for ties, which is in the law. It's unbelievable, but these are the things our people love, and then when you come to tell them the truth, they hate you for it. Because it we're supposed to be telling the blacks and Hispanics that the Bible says that we're the kings of the earth. People should be flooding down here just to hear more. Even if they don't believe you, right. they can tell me some more about that that's coming out of the Bible. We're not reading the Quran, but they won't because the Lord said they're not going to listen to us. If we're, telling, if we're selling some snake oil, though, we have the line right, right, yep. uh, 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 around the corner, right? Go yep. ahead. As adamant harder than flint. As adamant harder than a flint. Go ahead. Have I made thy forehead. Right, so our forehead can get real breezy and hard, too. Right, go ahead. Fear them not. So the Lord said, don't be scared of our people, man. Because right now, there's just, right now, people that believe. There's going to be a time where there's going to be a whole bunch of our people tripping, you know what I'm saying? Man, the Lord said, don't be afraid of the way that they I'm look. say, Muhammad came through. Uh, this only Gabriel, 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 right? Gabriel came that, through. That doesn't happen to Joel so Muhammad, that's, right? That doesn't uh, happen to Creflo Dollar, oh, right? Uh, but, you know, but you know who it did happen to? The Gabriel came through, the Bible. right? Didn't uh, demons uh, always come uh, walking up to them? People that were struck with illness, illnesses and plagues? That only happens to us, but that's how it's supposed to work, right? Go ahead and finish that scene. That's why the Lord wanted us to come outside, like we say all the time, because every nation, every person needs to hear this word from the Bible. They need to hear the, the gospel of the kingdom being preached. And like I said, if we went to a, a, a Hebrew Israelite church, the only people that would be there are people who believe what we say. But God wants us to come here so the whole entire world can hear this, because all these nations got judgments coming, right? Go ahead. Fear them not. Neither be dismayed by their looks. Or their looks, right? Though they be a rebellious house. Though they be a rebellious house. So we know we got a rebellious nation that we're dealing with, a hard headed nation that aren't going to listen to us, but the Lord said, don't fear them and go tell them anyway, right? Go ahead. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto thee, right. receive in thy heart, right. and hear with thine ears, right. and go, get thee to them of the captivity. Go get to thee to them of the captivity, right? Mm. So if somebody said that today, who would they be talking about? Who, is, uh, who would they consider other captivity in America today? Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's certainly not Esau, right? But guess what? Our people won't give me, give me my son. <laughs> here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. You know, and, and, you know, I, close. Out every week, and I say this every week, this should be being taught in school for doctrine, right? Every world kingdom, every all the histories of the world, in one chapter, it, it, it was told about, right? Go ahead. No, no, slot it. So the children of captivity, my bad. So when Ezekiel's writing, Ezekiel's right here. And they were in captivity there. Captivity here, captivity here, captivity here, captivity here. We're actually here and we're in captivity still. Exact right. same thing the Israelites been going through. And these are the type of things that our people don't want to hear. But they want to hear tithe. But the laws done away with. But give me some tithes. Unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. Go ahead.
It's right. powerful. It's, yeah, it's, it's really right. like that for all the nations, man. If the Lord would have, if the Lord would have came to these nations, they probably would have. If He would have made the laws with them, they probably would have listened. But Israel, they're hard headed. They won't listen. Um, you got some more than that? Yeah. And go get thee to them of their captivity right. unto the children of thy people, right. and speak unto them and tell them, Thus said the Lord God, right. whether they will hear or whether they, they will forbear. Right, so whether they're going to listen or whether they don't, the Lord said you got to go and tell them. So we can't, I can't say, wake up today and say, man, I'm not going to go down and teach the Bible because there's nobody down there and nobody going to listen. You know what I'm saying? The Lord already covered that. You go tell them whether they listen or whether they don't listen, right? Uh -huh. Let me get Nehemiah the ninth chapter. All right? Nehemiah 9 and 16. But, you know, like I say, uh, the Lord said in their affliction, they're going to seek me early. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, mm. Like, like I always said, part of affliction isn't just the white man putting his foot up our ass. Part of affliction is not being able to go where you want to go. You know, so you want to go have a drink at the bar and not be able to do that. You know what I'm saying? That's affliction. Going to the grocery store and not being able to come back with some toilet paper. That's an affliction. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and because of that affliction, my cousin's back there being afflicted. <laughs> my man's home. Okay? That's affliction. And he's here, though. You know what I'm saying? So the most high is right over there. You know what I'm saying? Hey, but guess what? It happened to all of us, though. You know what I'm saying? Right. At some point, something happened when we all woke up and said, you know what? We need to go listen to the Bible. Gosh. You know what I'm saying? But everybody down here, right? Which one of you guys said, hey, I'm, I know for a fact, but I can order, I want to be downtown reading the Bible. How many of that happened to you guys? None of us chose this, right? But God got us all right here against it. What we thought we were going to do, right? But the Bible says, many inventions are in a man's heart, but the counsel of the Most High is what's going to stand, right? right. Wherever the Lord made you to be, that's who you're going to be. Whether you want to do it or not, you know what I'm saying? And you're, in, and you're stuck in this, man, in these last days. Whether you want to ignore it, oh, this isn't happening, no. It's happening, and you're in it. You know what I'm saying? Period, point, blank, right? That's why the Bible says, for what if some, get that, Romans the third chapter real quick. It's like, man, I can get it. Romans 3 and 1. What's up with you, man? You ain't worried about the corona? You chilling. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to be that. Come on, man. I'm not going to miss out. The book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 1. Bring it out. What advantage then hath the Jew? Right, so the Bible's asking, what advantage has the Jew, right? Because we know that Jesus Christ was a Jew, King David was a Jew. Solomon, Moses, those were Jews, right? So what advantage has the Jew? Go ahead. Or what profit is there of circumcision? Well, you got the circumcision, you got the uncircumcision. What were we just talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What profit is the circumcision? Circumcision means those that are keeping the law, right? The Jews were of the circumcision, right? Go ahead. Much every way. Much every way. Go ahead. Cheaply because. But mainly, mainly. Go ahead. That unto them were committed the oracles of God. All right, so unto the Jews, the chosen people of God, they were the ones that the law was given to. So unto them was committed the oracles of God. Go ahead. For what if some did not believe? So this is the point right here. What if some people don't believe, right? What if people don't believe that uh, the Yahushua is coming back with the angels? What if people don't believe this white man is going into captivity, these Moabites, Ammonites are going into slavery? If all the, who, what if they don't believe all the nations are going to come and bow down before Israel, right? What if they don't believe that? Go ahead. Shall their unbelief? So the fact that they don't believe it, go ahead. Make the faith of God without effect? Is that going to make the faith of God, the things that God says is going to happen, is that going to make it without effect because they don't believe it? Go ahead. God forbid. God forbid, right? Go ahead. Yay! Let God be true. So God's going to be true. That's why we're out here, right? We're not listening to people's opinion, how men think. God is going to be true. God, how, do we, how do we speak with God? How do we hear God's words in the Bible? God's words are going to be true, right? Mm. So when people don't want to listen to us, they act like we're coming up with some new something. We've all been taught that the Bible is the truth, right? So we're just going into the Bible to read it because God said his words are going to be true. But people don't want to do that. People want to come out their own heart, right? Go ahead. But every man alive. But every man alive. Get Romans 11. Hey, listen, real quick. There's a point that people gloss over when they read the scriptures, right? It says, what advantage then has the Jew? Not everybody. Not the heathen, not the non-Israelite, the Jew. Or well, what profit is there of circumcision? What profit is there of keeping the law? When you're an Israelite and you keep the law, what happens? It says, much every way, chiefly, but most importantly, because that under because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. So when you say that you don't understand the scriptures or you don't understand the prophecies, it's because you're blinded. Why? Because you're what? You're in sin. 
Once you follow the law, sins, and commandments of the Most High, God starts revealing His oracles unto you. Uh, That's why uh, not everybody can preach this word. Pastor Porchup will never ever in life be able to confound a Hebrew Israelite that's following the commandments. That's, that's not going to happen. Uh, Pastor so Porchup, yeah, you worry, worry about asking people to pass the porch up. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> now let me get Romans uh, uh, 10. Sorry, sorry, verse 10. The book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 1. Brethren, right. my heart's desire... When he bre says brethren, Paul's talking to Israel, because the Israelites are his brethren, right? The people, with, people think that a word is, is, is as harmless as brethren doesn't mean anything, but it does. Brethren is, you, is him acknowledging the audience in front of him and who he's speaking to, all right? Another, another, yeah. another thing, too, the word brethren is talking about to someone from his nation. His nation his when you go into the Greek word of what brethren means... It's literally the translation is talking about someone from your same mother and father, someone from the same father, or someone from the same tribe or nation. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. And this is what's substantiated. When it says brethren, it says for God of, for Israel. Verse 2. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God. Like talking about our people, talking about the Israelites. Because even, even though a person might not know the laws of God, you, you go to a black and Hispanic and ask them if they believe in God, they're going to tell you, yeah, you know what I'm saying? A lot of times you say, do you believe in the Bible? They'll be like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Now, they don't know about the laws. And then, well, what are the Ten Commandments? <laughs> they think there really is only ten, but they can't name all ten. But if you ask them, hey, man, if you had a choice to go with Satan or to go with God, who would you go with? They would say Jesus. Nine of, nine, nine, nine of ten of our people would, right? So the Bible says, Paul's praying for Israel. And he's praying that they might be saved. He didn't say, I pray for the whole entire world might be saved. He said, my heart's desire and prayer for Israel is that they might be saved, right? Go ahead. For I bear them record right. that they have a zeal of God. So our people have a zeal of God. We already know that, right? They love the Lord, all right? They, 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 or they, at least they confess with their mouths that they love the Lord. They're not going to just say there is no God, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead. But not according to knowledge. Right, so we've got a lot of people that will tell you, oh, I believe in God, I love Jesus, I have a zeal. You can see their zeal, but their zeal is not according to the knowledge of God. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. For they be ignorant of God's righteousness. So ignorant means the lack of knowledge of something. So it says them being ignorant of God's righteousness, because our people don't understand what it is that God says is righteous. You talk to a Christian, they'll be like, I'm a good person, you know, I don't hurt anybody, I, you know. In their mind, because that's what they think, it's God's righteousness because they don't know. They're ignorant of God's righteousness. So they say that thinking that that's what it is, right? Go ahead. I tell people about Jesus. You know, I spread the word. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. And going about to establish their own righteousness. Right. So, so, so because they're ignorant of God's righteousness, right? We tell a person you can't eat pork. They're ignorant of that. They're not hearing that. Nigga, please. That, that has nothing to do with wickedness or righteousness to them in their mind. So it says... They go about to establish their own righteousness. So they don't know what God's laws are. So they'll go about to say whatever they think is right. So you tell somebody, say, hey, man, God said that to you. Hey, but this is what God means to me. This is what he means to me. They don't know in the Bible you can't make God be who you want him to be. You know what I'm saying? You can only do that to a make-believe character that you created in your mind. Somebody has a lie that created everything. You can't just sit home in your bed and say, well, no, God ain't mad about it. I'm making God a be. You can't do that. But our people do that, right? These are the same people that the Bible says are rebellious, the same stiff-necked people that God sent us to, that he said, aren't going to listen. Now, he's letting us know that they have a zeal of God, but their zeal is not according to knowledge. And then being ignorant of God's righteousness, they go about to establish their own righteousness. Go ahead. Have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Right, so they haven't submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. What is the righteousness of God? The law, statutes, and commandments. Walking around with a beard on your face, even if your shit doesn't really grow that good. You know, if you run around, you, guys, you just got to look stupid. You got a beard, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and many more. Not dressing up like a woman, you know what I'm saying? We turn on the TV, we see all kinds of black men wearing women garments now. But now we understand why, you know what I'm saying? Because God said don't do it. And we know who the people are who run that industry. They're against God. So they're going to do everything they possibly can to make you break the law, statute, and commandments of the Bible. Get First Thessalonians real quick in the second chapter. Good. Uh, First Thessalonians 2 and 14. The book of First Thessalonians, chapter two, verse fourteen. Right. For ye, brethren, 
became followers of the churches of God, right. which Judea, no, Salakia, which Judea, oh, yeah, first Thessalonians, yeah, I'm reading it, oh, two, Salakia, Salakia. For ye brethren became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. Right. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen. Of your own countrymen. You've suffered like things from your own countrymen, from your own people, right? He's saying the same thing back then. The same way the prophets had, had tore down the prophets before, he's saying you suffered the exact same things, right? Go ahead. Even as they have of the Jews. Right. Who both killed the Lord Jesus. Who both killed the Lord Jesus. So we know the Jews are people, right? They killed Christ, right? And what, what did we read earlier? That the Pharisees would say, hey, if we were alive in that day, we wouldn't have been involved with that, right? That's what mm -hmm. people say right now. We try to teach them the Bible. But like, you guys argue with everything we said. If, if, if Nehemiah was right here in front of your face, would you talk to him? If Stephen was here, if Stephen was here, but the Israelites were throwing stones at him, do you think you would have been a part of throwing stones at him? And they would say, no, they wouldn't. But then when Yahweh Shai said, you guys are the children of the ones that killed the prophets, right? So the people that act funny that won't listen, nine times out of ten, they would have been right there in that mob killing the, killing the prophets of old, right? That's right? Go ahead. Who both killed the Lord Jesus right. and their own prophets. And their own prophets, go ahead. And have persecuted us. And persecuted us. So understand something, man. One thing Yahweh Shai said is, uh, if they if they hated me, no, they're going to hate you too. You know what I'm saying? And so the servant is not above his master. So if we just read right here that they put him to death, then no, our people are going to do the same thing to y'all too, all right? So don't don't let that uh, be any marvel, man. When people act funny, what are you doing, bro? How's your van? Yes. Yeah, if they're yours, you can get them, man. We just didn't know, man. Talk to that brother. Hey, man, we ain't tripping with you, bro. We just thought you were trying to steal something. It's all good. Yeah, it's all good. Now, you believe in the Bible, man? So, so, yeah. so, come on, come, come, come holler at us. Let's chop it up with you for a minute. Yeah, we're we're going to do that too. We, get, we didn't know who you were, brother. That's it. We didn't know who you were. If you come in peace, we're going to deal with yeah. you in peace. Yeah, come on, let me holler at you. Come on, come on. Hey, hey, we ain't going to do that, man. We just thought. Uh, hey, hey. hey, man, a lot of crazy stuff happens up here. Yeah, man, man we, don't, we didn't know who you were. Come we're on, let's do that, it. Man. Let's talk about the Quran. You don't want to talk about the Bible and the Quran? We talk about the, we want, I want to talk to you about the Quran, brother. I can't hear you. What'd you say? Huh? No, but we want to holler at you. We want to talk to you. See how people are bugged out, man. Oh, this is his voice, man. This is the people of God. It's all the one, man. Yeah, he, he's on one now. <laughs> he's about to leave his shoes. <laughs> he didn't want to deal with me, man. He thought, man, fuck it. Hey, slock you, slock you. <laughs> hey, he looked like a ninja with the glasses on, man. He had no problem. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, shit. Go ahead, shit. Man, he, he I really was gonna leave his shoes there. <laughs> you go, man. Oh, my bad. Yeah, man. What is this dude doing? The shit that happens in the is crazy. <laughs> the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 15. Who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, right. and have persecuted us, and they please not God. Right. And are contrary to all men. And they're contrary to all men. That's what our people do, right? Get uh, uh, Acts 7 and 52. And read the 16. And I'll get one more and we'll look to close out. Acts 7 and 52? Yes. Yeah. The, <laughs> the book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 52. Right. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? Right, so you got to understand that. The question is asked, which one of the prophets did you guys not do this to? You know what I'm saying? So that means you got to do this to every single one. So understand, when you go trying to tell the Israelites that they're the people of God and that God loves them and they keep the laws, just know you got to deal with this too, right? And Jesus said the servant's not above his master. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. And they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one. Right, so this is Stephen right here, another prophet, another Israelite, right? And he had a bunch of men rising. First, first the, the Jews loved Stephen, right? But then he had a couple of wicked Pharisees and a couple of other people come and bring up a false report on him saying that he was speaking against the Bible so now he's giving his account of what he was saying, right? And the Israelites are still just, they're just, they're demons, man, <laughs> back then. And there's a lot of demons right now, too. Go ahead. And they have slain them which showed before the coming of the just one, right. of whom ye have been now 
They'll be traitors and murderers. Right. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. Right. So Stephen just told the whole mob of Israelites. He, there's a whole bunch that he read. We, we, we skipped all of that just because it's for time. But after he said all those things to them, it says they were cut to heart. Go ahead. And they gnashed on him with their teeth. They said they gnashed on him, man. So they smashed on him. Ain't that how we have a, have a talk right now? They, got, so they gnashed on Stephen, right? <laughs> but he, being full of the Holy Ghost, right. looked up steadfastly step into heaven right. and saw the glory of God right. and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Right. Keep going. Is that verse 60? No, take okay, a 60. Right. Yeah. And so said. He's, stone. he's looking up into the sky and in, his, in, 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 in that little state that you're in. Where you're, uh, where you're conscious and you're about to go into uh, into dying or whatever the word is, unconscious. He said he looked up and he could see Jesus up there, right? Go ahead. And and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened right. and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Right. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears right. and ran upon him with one accord. Right. So they ran upon him with one accord. Everybody was in the same mindset, right? Go ahead. And cast him out of the city right. and stoned him. Remember we just read a minute ago, a prophet's not welcome in his own country, right? You see how they said they cast him out the city, stoned him, right? Go ahead. And the witness laid down their clothes right. at a young man's feet, right. whose name was Saul. Saul, go ahead. And they stoned Stephen, right. calling upon God and saying, Lord right. Jesus, receive my spirit. Right, so he's calling upon God, knowing he's getting ready to die. He says, Lord, receive my spirit. And then look what he says after that. Go ahead. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, right. Lord, right. let not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, and he fell see, asleep. And do you see that? Do you see the, the level of, uh, of integrity and humility? Imagine that. Imagine all of us sitting right here and hitting you with stones. Fuck shooting you. We got rocks. And we're just throwing them at you. Now you're on the ground, you can see Jesus up there, and you think to tell Jesus, don't forgive these guys. Don't lay this upon none of these guys. You know what I'm saying? Oh, this is no, the mindset of our people. This is the type of love that we got to have for each other. Wow. This is why the Bible says that we're supposed to love each other the way we love ourselves. Right. For him to do that, that's clearly, even in, into death, say, God, don't, don't, you know, don't lay this to these guys. You start hitting me with some sticks and stones, man. Crazy. I'm cussing you guys out all the way till I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> then, you know, then I read this, and I'm like, man, that was the wrong spirit to be in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, let's, let's end with this. Um, that's good. Uh, First Corinthians. Um, no, no, Nehemiah 9 and 16. It's a lot. 9 and 16 and 17, and then uh, read 26 and 27. What? Nehemiah 9. 16 and 17, and 26 and 27. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 9, verse 16. But they and our fathers dealt proudly and hardened their necks and hardened not. To, and hearken not right. to thy commandments. Right, our people did proudly, hearken not to thy commandments, hardened our necks, right? Took for us uh, uh, hard for his, go ahead. And refused to obey. And refused to obey, just like we see today. People refuse to obey, man. All thing is this time, man, we're not going into no more slavery, man. Mm. You know what I'm saying? The Lord took us into captivity over and over again for breaking his commandments. This time, we're not going into slavery no more. Now, people are just going to the lake of fire, right? That's the next plan. That's the second death. The first death was the flood. This next one is the fire. The flood fire, all right? Go ahead. The flood fire. Neither were mindful of thy wonders. And neither were they, neither were they mindful of thy wonders, right? Go ahead. That, that thou didst among them. Right. That were not even mindful of the wonders that the Lord said He did amongst our people, right? Like what? Like delivering us up out of the land of Egypt, right? Like subduing all those nations that were in our land. All the things the Lord did for the Israelites, right? Go ahead. But harden their necks. They harden their necks, right? And get, Go ahead. And get the rebellion. Appointed a captain to return to their bondage. Right. Go ahead. But thou art a God ready to pardon. But God is a God that's ready to pardon. So even though our people didn't listen, even though they were hard headed, right? Even though they didn't listen to the prophets, the Lord said He is a God that's ready to pardon, right? Go ahead. Gracious and merciful. Gracious and merciful. And the Lord said He's going to have mercy on who? Uh, Jacob, right? Jacob, right? So we know that we got to go through this to get to where we're going, and eventually the Lord's going to have mercy on us. We know we're at the end of this because there's no more kingdom that's going to come and rule according to my, to my, to my, you know, according to my thing right here, man. There's nothing else you're going to remember me for. You'll remember me for pushing this out here right here, right? This is unbelievable, right? So where are we at? We're right here. And what does the Bible say is coming next? That stone that was cut out that was going to smash all this, which represented who? The one the world calls Christ, right? So we know that there's no other kingdom coming. 
Chinese is hoping that when this all hell breaks loose, uh, uh, that out of the smoke of that, they're going to be the next superpower. But no, they are going to be the next slave, man. All right? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that's thus right. saith the Lord, right? That's right. Go ahead. Slow to anger right. and of great kindness right. and forsook is them not. And we know that the Lord is slow to anger, man, because the Bible says the, the, the punishment for sin is death. So the Lord wouldn't be wrong for killing every single person that he sees, right? Sure, so right. for him to allow us to still be here and to still be able to ask for repentance and still get it right shows how much mercy he has. Especially if you're a person who hates sin. If you're a person who, if you, if you, if you hate, if you hate the liver, right? Or well, let's say you hate, let's say you hate hamburgers. I come to your house with a hamburger. That's me basically telling you, fuck you, right? Yeah, right, <laughs> right, right? right. So if God hates sin and we don't do anything but sin, the whole world is just telling them F you all the time, right? So you got to be an unbelievable, merciful person for you just not to destroy everybody. You yeah. already said that that's yeah. the punishment for that, right? Yeah. Go ahead. The scripture says that every time you sin against the Most High, you break his heart. Wow. Right. I believe that. Wow. And that's cold, man. I'm just to think better like that. That's why the Lord is looking for people that actually tremble at his word. The Lord said that the fear of him is the beginning of wisdom, right? So, so we got to be scared of the Lord, and it says to tremble at His words. When you read this thing, you're supposed to be scared when you read this. Okay. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to do better right here because God might jack me up. But the Lord still said that He gave us a heart of stone. You know what I'm saying? He didn't give us the heart that He's gonna give us in the new, t in, uh, in the new covenant where we won't sin anymore. So us being in this flesh, us having that stony heart, you're gonna go off sometimes. You know what I'm saying? But you got to pick yourself up. That's why the Bible says a righteous man uh, falls seven times, but he gets up over and over again. Right? You know what I'm saying? So you just gotta get it together. Go ahead. And uh, 26 and 27, I think, that we know with that. And we'll end it on that. Verse 26. Nevertheless, they were disobedient and rebelled, and rebelled against thee. Right. And cast thy law behind their backs. Cast, uh, cast the Lord's law behind our backs, right? And so we do to this day, right now to this day. And it's called because we've been taught that since the time we've been born. We've never been taught anything different. Either. So I, I've seen a video where a dude said, it's not that, it's not that Israel sinned. Is that since the time we've been born, we've done nothing but sin. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The whole time. And one of those reasons is because the, 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 the person that we look to to teach us, the pastors, you know what I'm saying? They don't know. You know what I'm saying? They go to a theologian seminary school to get a, to get a certificate. And what they do is they go to that school and they're taught all the same lies that the, that the, that the slave master was taught on the, on, the, on the slave plantation. And then he goes and gets a certificate and teaches those lies. So, of course, when he goes to church, he thinks he's doing the right thing. A lot of them do. But... He hasn't been taught anything, so he thinks he's teaching what's right, but it was all wrong. You know what I'm saying? Right, yeah, bring it, bring it. Come on, powerful Levi, bring it out. Okay. Oh, you, yeah. uh, you already had the Ezekiel 33. Uh -huh. No, bring that out. I, I was gonna. I'm about three, but I was gonna bring that. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 33, verse 11. Yeah. Say unto them, right. as I live, saith the Lord God. So the Lord saying, as I live. That's yeah. that's the Lord's way now. How he said it? I put that on my life. That's the Lord basically saying that. As I, but he didn't say it all. You know what I'm saying? As, I, as sure as I'm living today, right? Go ahead. I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, right? but that the wicked turn from his way right. and live. See, we know Joel 9, 24 says the earth was given into the hand of the wicked. Oh, right. The wicked that he's talking about right here is not talking about that wicked that the earth was given to. We know in the Bible the Edomites cannot ask for repentance. They are in trouble. So this wicked right here that God's talking about is talking about the wicked Israelites, right? Go ahead. Come on. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways. Right, so Edomites can't turn from their evil ways. You know what I'm saying? Mm. They can't. So this can't be talking about them. Who can turn from their evil ways? The Israelites. How do the Israelites turn from their evil ways? By keeping the covenant, the laws that was given to them. That's how you know this is not talking to everybody on the nation. All the plant, all the nations on the earth were not given these laws. We just read uh, what advantage has the Jew. Says chiefly uh, that the oracles of God were committed unto him. So the other nations, like we said, they get judged for how they treat Israel. Blesses for if you bless if you bless Israel, curses if you curse them. Israel gets judged for the commandments because we made that covenant with the God, with the Most High, right? Go ahead. Come on. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways. Right. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? Right. If you don't turn from your God's like man, turn from your evil ways. What are you gonna die for? You know what I'm saying? All you guys got to do is turn, but if you don't, you guys is dead. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. Good morning. Come on. Verse 12. Go ahead. Therefore, thou son of man, say unto the children of uh, the children of thy people, right. the righteousness of the righteous right. shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. Right. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in the day that turneth from his wickedness. Right. Neither shall the righteous be able to live for his righteousness. The day that he uh, he sinneth. 
Okay. Jump uh, down to verse 31. Yeah. Let's finish out with that. Read it until 33. Come. This is uh, verse 31. And they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, right. and they hear thy word, right. but they will not do them. Right. For with their heart, or slot for with their mouth, they show much love. Isn't that what we just read in Romans, that they have a zeal in God, but not according to knowledge, right? Read that sentence again. God, for with their mouth, right. they show much love. That's that zeal, right? Don't they? I love God. I love God. I love God. God, for Jesus, if I just hide you, right? Go ahead. God, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. But, but their heart goes after what they covet of, man. They don't go after what God's saying in this Bible. Their heart, whatever their heart is coveting, that's what they go after. And with their mouth, they talk about God, but they don't do nothing God said to do. And what's so crazy is that this Bible is in every church. These words are in there too, but the pastor will not open this up and read it to them. Right? Go ahead. Son. Verse 32. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice right. and can play well on an instrument. Isn't that how church works? Isn't that, isn't that exactly how church works? You go in there, and church is all about somebody who can sing real good, right? Or that dude who can sit down there and play on that organ, right? That's, that's exactly what the Bible says. That's why the church, it. exactly what the Bible says. Man. Go ahead. God, for they hear thy word. They hear the word, right? But they do them not. They ain't going to do this. <laughs> say, excuse my language. They hear the word, but they don't do it at all, right? Go ahead. Verse 33. But why don't they do it? Because the church, they read it, but then they tell them that the laws are done away with. You know what I'm saying? So they're hearing the word. But they don't got to do them. The pastor, who they look to as a spiritual guide, for spiritual guidance, he's telling them they don't want to do it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. The Bible says that you're not supposed to be a homosexual. They have a homosexual in the choir. They say a woman's not supposed to talk. You don't have a woman being a pastor. Right? So they hear the word. They're not going to do none of them. Right? And then they act like they act like these things that God is saying to do, they're so minute that God can't be saying to do it. Oh, eat pork? You think so? You're telling me God's going to kill me if I eat pork? Like they can't believe something like that. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. God, verse 33. And when this cometh to pass, the Bible says, when this cometh to pass, right? What is this scripture too? It says, when it cometh to pass, go ahead. Lo, it will come. Hey, it is going to come to pass for sure. Go ahead. Then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them.